Folks, it's Mike here from Boston Smith UK, and I'm just doing a quick one on our release generation FET boards. Sadly, our version 2.0 proved too costly to manufacture. You may have seen this from Tom at Phone Data Services. So we're not producing these for a while. Um, however, we do have a supplementary version 1 that I did start with that uses through-hole components to take away some of the fat of uh, mounting a MOSFET. So this requires artful use of a pair of pliers to bend the legs properly to fit on the board. Uh, here you can see the contents of our next generation strife wiring kit. And uh, I'm just going to quickly run through how you would rapidly assemble the board itself. The first thing you need to realize is that the FET goes on first. And in the production version, this silk for the diode will be on both sides. So you'll be able to see where the diode goes on both layers. Uh, and the first thing you want to do is bend the legs of the MOSFET, like so. It's a nice, firm 90 degree angle. And then you slot that in through the board legs there. And that should sit nicely, like so. And the good thing about the board is that even though it's not quite as magical as the version 2, because you're still not having to solder directly to the legs, you can take your solder and soldering iron and just dot. So heat your component like so. And there you are. That's the MOSFET mounted. You can then use a pair of clippers to trim these legs, like so. And that leaves you with the MOSFET mounted. So the next step is to take your pull-down resistor and, again, a pair of pliers, bend the legs at 90 degrees so that it fits through the board. Fits on the board like so. And I find it helps with the resistor to bend the legs out like that so that it holds in place. And take your helping hands again, slot like so. Okay, and now the next component to go on is your diode. And I usually clip the ends rather than fight the tape. And once again, you need to look at the silk, uh, the patterning on the board, uh, and the duct cathode wants to go to the left of the board, like so when you view it like that. And again, a 90 degree bend in the legs, gives you a nice, easy way of mounting your pullback diode, and again, fluff that up. Sometimes it can take a little bit of practice to work out where the legs need be bent to, but eventually you can work it out. You just work, try to be gentle and work the legs around 90 degrees with the pliers. Uh, the good thing about these RGP diodes is that they're really tough. Uh, they're a bit bulky, so I am looking at supplying a slightly smaller diode in the future. But for now, the good thing about the RGP diodes is they are tough, which means that newbies who might struggle, or people who are trying to do it quickly on camera for you know, the first time, um, and there you are. So the diode is now mounted, and once again, you take the board, you clip like so, and once again, the aim is to solder and flood the solder pad with solder, it will eventually, like so, produce a nice big solid join there between the diode and the pad. So that's the pull-down resistor and the MOSFET and the diode fitted. The next step I usually go with is the plugs here. Now, this is a slightly older version of this board. 
um, the actual generation has the plugs moved over just a little bit so they're less in the way. Uh, and we are supplied with this 90 degree header pin here that you can slot in uh, and then plug in uh, this JST line like that. So you solder this end to your switch that comes with your blaster and this end uh, obviously then plugs in. Now you could just ignore that completely and solder the wire um, of your switch directly to these to these terminals here, uh, if that's if that's the option you want. Uh, personally, I'm just going to show off how the slot system works. And again, nice and easy. I just lock. I usually get to use gravity when I do this. Um, some people might prefer to use the second pair of helping hands to slot the. Uh, version like that. And again, then you can plug in your switch in and out, or you can solder directly. Now, as you can see with this one, um, I've made, caused myself a bit of an issue because I'm soldering the VBAT line here, and this is going to be in the way. On the final production version of these boards, uh, this has moved over by a couple of, by a half an inch, uh, so that it, you know, so you can get your VBAT line in there.